Hi, I'm Billy Beck, Extension Forestry Specialist with Iowa State University Extension and Outreach. Salvage timber harvest is an important forest management tool and continues to be a common occurrence following the 2020 derecho. Salvage timber harvest entails the harvesting of damaged trees for economic value while simultaneously benefiting the residual forest stand and achieving landowner forest management objectives. It's basically taking lemons and making lemonade, turning a seemingly devastating situation into a positive forest management opportunity. However, this practice has important differences as compared to traditional timber harvest. In this video, we'll visit a forest in East Central Iowa that was severely impacted by the August 2020 derecho. It, this is just incredible. This is, uh, this is a great day. So many excellent examples of just forestry in general, the industry and the pros that are involved in it. It's just, it's amazing to witness this. We'll cover the steps involved in the salvage harvest process, its overall value and role in forest management, and key concepts to consider before, during, and after. Lastly, we'll work to highlight and define the roles of three key players, loggers, timber buyers, and foresters. Welcome to Wanatee Park, owned and managed by the Lynn County Conservation Department in East Central Iowa. The August 2020 derecho resulted in near complete canopy destruction of nearly 300 acres of central hardwood forest. We'll first visit with Andy Huck, conservation ecologist and land protection specialist with Lynn County Conservation. We'll hear his initial reaction to the damage, as well as an explanation of why a salvaged timber harvest was the best option to not only recoup costs associated with cleanup and recovery, but also to achieve their long-term forest management goals. When the derecho went through, we had to get the campgrounds cleaned up so our campers could come back in. And then when we started to walk back in here, it was just overwhelming. The damage, I mean, we're just kind of guessing we lost 80% of our good quality oaks in here. And so like, what do you do? I mean, it was just through your mind for a loop. We have a lot of invasives here and we just, we weren't quite sure how to go about it, but we kind of looked at this as, like Mark said, glass half full, where we can actually use this opportunity as a reset to restore this area. So by coming through and harvesting all those trees that meet the criteria and getting the value from that back, we'll use that money to help restore this area. So we'll have to have another contractor come through and clean up all the tops and everything else, clean out the weed trees so that we can go through and restore these areas and we can look historically to, was it savanna, was it prairie, you know, what was it before, if it was good oak hickory timber. And so now we're in a, after it's all cleaned up, then we can come through here and replant trees, do some seeding and get some good forbs, wildflowers, and grasses back in here too. Thinking about future man management as well, those oak hickory timbers historically had fire. Well, with all the shade tolerant species growing up in here, we didn't have hardly anything from understory. So by cleaning this and opening it up, we can hopefully get some grasses and forbs growing in through here so we can start managing with fire and being able to get in here with equipment, herbicide, what we have to do to control the invasive so we can get it restored back to either a good quality savanna or timber, whatever we decide. In a salvage harvest, considering what to cut and what to leave can be a tough decision. Let's hear from Andy on the specific harvest criteria they used and why. Yeah, so we didn't just want them taking the most valuable trees out because then we'd have to hire another contractor to come through and take out everything else. So our criteria was the 50% or more top, the heartwood exposed, or if the tree is leaning and there's roots exposed. And we said anything 12 inches DBH or greater has to go of any species. So we don't just want them taking the high dollar white oak and walnut. We want them taking the basswood, the maple, everything. The more that they can take out and salvageable, we'll get something for it, be it pallet wood or whatever. The more they can get out is the more value we'll get and the less work we're gonna have to do later when we hire another contractor to come in and to clean up the tops and everything else remaining. Ben Bruggeman of BNR Logging, a fourth generation timber buyer, was charged with removing all trees that met criteria 
and then scaling and grading all logs to provide an estimate of value. Lastly, he was responsible for marketing logs to timber buyers for sale. Ben utilized two logging subcontractors to achieve this, Simon's logging and Oberbreckling logging. We'll now hear from Ben as he briefly describes the Wanatee Park salvage harvest and how the derecho positively impacted forest management. Today we're at the Lynn County Conservation Board, um, Wanatee Park. Um, the storm hit in August of 2020 and to our goal is to salvage all that we can salvage as far as trees, you know, tops damaged, uh, laid on the ground or split, to utilize so that we can start the regrowth process. Um, the, as far as, you know, getting oak regeneration, we need to clean this up and open it up in order to get the trees the sunlight they need to grow to make the best of a bad situation. Salvage harvests can be tricky from a timber buyer and logger perspective. Let's hear from Ben as he describes these challenges. So, you know, in a storm damage setting like we're in today, you know, if you look up at the tree that's all splintered, um, and then you kind of stroll over, you see trees that have, you know, less damage, um, it's hard to put an ex exact value. Um, I could say that that tree here is worth you know eighty dollars because it's you know it's got an eight foot log I'm pretty sure and you know where if it, the tree up above I know there's hardly any damage that's an easier way to figure you could say that tree's worth you know three hundred dollars I mean so damaged trees are a lot harder more risk so therefore you have to kind of compensate on how you handle that so a, a salvage sale like we're doing a grade and yield type basis is a more accurate way because when we cut that tree and the tree has 12 feet instead of 8 now the landowner gets paid for 12 instead of 8 where just cruising through this woods um, you know if I on a normal day if say it undamaged there's say there's you could say well I give you 400,000 for everything in here for example where since all their damage these guys that are doing the harvesting get paid by the foot and so if this takes two months on a normal a normal situation, now it takes three and a half, they have to be compensated accordingly or they're not gonna wanna do it and uh, we'll go do something else. So therefore, you know, I have to pay them accordingly and which lowers the value of the trees. So doing it on the salvage is a that more accurate way for everybody to come out ahead because I know that it takes so much per foot to get you know to get the trees out and if it takes an extra three days per acre for example then we can you know offset that by saying that tree's worth you know the landowner is going to get 60 percent versus maybe 70 in a normal situation. Now let's hear from Mark Vitosh, district forester with the Iowa DNR as he discusses traditional versus salvage harvests, the steps involved, and key concepts to consider before, during, and after. The thing to think about in a normal traditional timber sale, if we don't have any damage, we're, we're usually going in with a forester or a consulting forester or the landowner, and we're selecting trees for the purpose of forest management. So those trees get marked with paint, um, they go through the timber, they mark those trees they want to sell, and then they actually send out a bid notice to uh, log buyers throughout the region and do what they call a lump bid sale or a lump sum bid sale. So basically they um, look at all the trees that are marked and then they turn in a, a value for those, for those trees in a lump sum. In a salvage harvest situation, things kind of got thrown out. I mean, if we talk to log buyers and, and folks that buy trees, it's really hard for them to evaluate these trees standing. And so a lot of times, let's just say this timber behind us was worth uh, $10,000 before the storm. If we mark the trees we were gonna mark and they said, okay, it's worth 10,000. Um, now, as a log buyer looks at this, they don't know if it's truly worth 10,000 because until they get those trees that are down on the ground, trees that are snapped out and actually be able to scale them and look at the volume, look at the defects, look at cracks, they don't really know. So 
in this situation standing, they may only bid a couple thousand dollars maybe because there's so much risk involved and they don't know what the value is. So what we've been doing in some of these sales, landowners will actually work directly with either a consultant who brings in a custom cutter. Um, they'll pull all the logs out and then they'll actually bring the buyers in for those logs. Uh, and then a lot of times those private landowners will work with the log logger on a percent basis where the logger will take 30 or 40 percent and the uh, landowner gets 60 to 70 percent depending on what they agree on but they take that off the bids that they get from the log buyers so normally on on county ground state ground we usually have to do the lump sum bidding that's just always been the practice but we tried something different here so in this case uh, the, the county actually put out an RFP uh, request for proposals where they actually asked loggers to bid on this logging job. So the bid was basically for them to cut trees down that met certain criteria which you're going to hear about, take any trees that are on the ground and other criteria, but to basically log this out, take the trees up to a landing, and then scale those and then hand that estimate a scale sheet basically telling us how many logs, species, what their estimated volume is. They gave that to the county and then the county is actually going to put those out for sealed bids for log buyers to come in and bid on those. Um, and in this case uh, the, the cutter or the, the logger is getting a percent of all those sales. So their compensation for doing all the logging, all the skidding, uh, in this case, they're, they're gonna get 36% of those sales for doing all that work. And that's the pre-agreement that they have with the county. As you've seen, there are three key players in the salvage harvest process. Loggers, timber buyers, and foresters. All have equally important, but very different roles in the harvest process. Foresters, work with forest landowners to guide them through the forest management process based on the landowner's management goals. In a harvest situation, a forester helps determine the need, design, and goals of the harvest operation. Having a forester involved in your timber harvest is critical and will help you to not only maximize financial return, but also ensure that the harvest works to achieve your forest management goals. Timber buyers, also known as log buyers, evaluate the quality, volume, and value of the trees available for sale in the harvest area. These folks have a unique and impressive skill set and almost have x-ray vision as they scan logs and trees for defects and assets that may be missed by the untrained eye. Loggers carry out the harvest operation by safely and carefully cutting and hauling the selected trees to a harvest landing. If you ever get the chance to witness a harvest operation, do it. These folks fell trees with surgeon-like accuracy, doing so in a manner that preserves integrity of harvested and residual trees, as well as the overall forest ecosystem. To highlight the care and skill loggers use to preserve the value of harvested and residual trees, let's observe a truly unique job in action, the topper. So uh, today we're gonna top this valuable walnut tree and the reason we are gonna do it is because we want to, if you look up into the tree, there's a fork in the top and when that tree lands, that causes pressure, which will, uh, um, cause the tree to snap and bust all the way down the ground. Because the grain, we'll, we'll see later, the grain of the tree, the tighter the grain, the more stress could happen, which therefore caused the tree to split and it could split from the top all the way down to the, all the, way down to the base. So we've got to bring in a guy that he's gonna climb the tree today and, and take the limbs out. Um, we typically try to do it on valuable walnut trees or trees that may damage other trees and we're trying to prevent, you know, damage to residual trees. Oh, 
one. All right, see you guys. Thank you. Yeah.